When we talk to IT professionals about data, they lock in on things like protecting data, backing it up. Uh, they might even uh, worry about archiving and preserving that data. But there's another aspect to data, especially unstructured data, is auditing and securing that data. Joining me on the whiteboard to talk about that, I've invited Bruce Baca. He is the CEO and founder of NTP Software. Bruce, thanks for joining us. Today. Yeah, thank you. So let's talk about this. Uh, you know, so a, a file's created and then the organization and, and users have some expectations, don't they? Absolutely. So let's say this is your file. Okay. And your first expectation, of course, is that nobody other than you, unless you permit it, can get to it. Right. So ID and password. But in today's world, that's not enough. Right. And everybody thinks about firewalls. But if you read sort of the next set of articles, everybody also says, this is only about an 80% solution. Right, which so, is where these guys like Snowden and WikiLeaks live, right? Right. Yep. So the previous director of the FBI said if you're an interesting enterprise, you do cool stuff or you're a big company, and you think you haven't got somebody else on your network, you're just simply wrong. <laughs> and so everybody's been penetrated. We've been penetrated more than once. And so the firewall is good for about 80%. And what Snowden, WikiLeaks, Sony, and the host of others suggest is that's not nearly enough. Okay. What stuns me as someone who creates products in this industry is that people don't put in place the solutions they need, even though they're easy to implement and inexpensive. Well, because I, I think there's a perception that getting that last 20% is really hard. You're saying that's not the case. Yeah, it's not hard at all. Okay. And in fairness to everybody else, I understand why they haven't done it. Right because everything writes sort of these promiscuous, techy, useless logs that don't actually solve this problem for you. Okay. And so if we look at the bigger picture, in today's world, it's, it's all about the server, the storage system on which you put your files. Right. And what you want to do is have some type of engine connected to the system, okay. not reading the logs, because okay. the first thing that happens when this gets in distress is that the logs stop being written. Right. And if I'm a hacker, I know how to edit those logs. Right. So you want an application that interacts with this system and then finds the things that are of interest to you okay. and makes note of them. So it's interacting at a file level then instead of the log At level? an OS file level. Okay. All right. And it's finding the things that are interesting to you okay. and making note of them. So that could be certain access patterns. Maybe you're an organization that hires interns during the summer, mm -hmm. and because they're interns and you hire them by the truckload and they're not particularly expensive, you also don't screen them very carefully. Right. So you want to watch what the interns do. Okay. Or maybe, since the analysts say that 80% of a company's assets today are their digital assets, right. then in addition to those digital assets, you have some crown jewels, right. and you really care about who touches these things. Okay, yes. Easy to watch. Okay. But the other thing that allows Snowden and WikiLeaks is these kind of hacks, they don't happen in 15 minutes. They don't happen in an hour. WikiLeaks was 250,000 documents across a broad range of servers. Okay, so it took time, obviously. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Snowden, we don't know how many it was, but again, across a broad range of servers. Right. So you can't do that in an instant. Right. Which means that this thing doing its job based on the policies you've set, mm -hmm. can figure out that there's something suspicious going on. Okay, so it looks for a, a set of accesses over a long period of time across a high number of servers or? Just pure volume itself. Gotcha. You know, in, <clears throat> unless it's a search in response to a subpoena, what need would you have to download 250,000 documents? Right. Most of which are in an archive. Right, those should be short and quick and very specific, I would think. Yeah, right. and you know, other common things are serial deletes, so an employee knows he's going to quit, oh, wants right. to delete everything before he's out the door. Sure. Serial edits, somebody has just done a misdeed, mm -hmm. and now they have to make all of the other reports and spreadsheets line up. Right. Or users who are only intended to be on the system between 9 to 5, and now that ID is logged in at midnight and going interesting places. 
So when I implement this, do I have to go in and define all that or is there a preset of defaults that I can sort of live with and, and then go in and fine tune it? We're now sort of you know on the other side of the log torture right. and into intelligent applications that can interact with the file server on these issues. Right. Then if you look at what we do, for example, we provide you with a set of best practice policies. Okay. Our suggestion is you just turn all of these on. And then we have an architecture, think of it as scripting, mm -hmm. where you can create what we call a business overwatch task, but techie cleverness. Right. But, but you can write a script that looks for the kinds of things that you would want to know about in your environment. So maybe it's chasing what the interns do. Okay. Maybe it's the employees who are logged on after midnight. You know, maybe it's the what happens. So you can create one of these overwatch tasks that just sits there in the system and monitors what's going on and tells you when something like this happens. Okay. The alternative, if you don't have this sort of intelligence, is number one, you're totally reliant, it sounds like, on the firewall, and then you're, you've got the like, horrible task of having to check logs on a regular basis. Right. Is, that, is that fair? Yeah. And, okay. and you know, when it comes to the subject of logs, you know, the, the log is the backup log. Right. Who reads backup logs? I've yet to meet anyone who does. Yeah. And so if you make this a problem in logs, A, it's too much data, and B, nobody has the time to look at it. Yeah, or it gets pushed too far down the, the food chain for somebody that doesn't, isn't necessarily a stakeholder, I would think, yeah. too. Yeah. And, and there's a hidden benefit that comes from our actual experience that nobody knows about. What's that? So when we implement with customers for reasons of security or Overwatch, um, what we find is very shortly after time, the most common use of the system is a VIP calls up and says, you deleted my files, usually with a little bit more force than that. And the IT group goes in to the database and says, no, no, actually you moved them over here on Thursday. Would you like us to put them back? And, and that becomes the most common use of the system. It's not all about security and all about the next attack. It's also about the user community doing things that they forget right. and being able to recover quickly from that scenario. Okay. So you can also detect it beyond just access, you can also detect like movement and th things of that nature as well. Yeah. Okay. Serial deletes, serial edits, serial call downs, automatic. Okay. Then for some or all of your users, you want a short term trace of anything that happens beyond a single file. Okay. Because if a user can't find a file, they have more experience with that and a little bit calmer. If a whole directory structure is missing, they're hysterical and they're going to blame IT. Right. Even though it was their File Explorer move that moved it. Now, does this work against uh, primarily Windows file servers, or is there a range of uh, solutions it would work with? Great question. So okay. we've been in the management of unstructured data business since forever, since okay. the original Windows NT. And as other vendors have entered the space, EMC, NetApp, Hitachi, we've been able to connect to their operating systems the same as we originally did with Windows and okay. then Linux. Okay. So when any what I would call appropriate storage platform, right. we can deliver the same feature set to the end customer community and we can aggregate it globally if that's the right answer. So if my unstructured data lives on a, a file server or on you know one of the more popular network attached storage systems, I could still rely on this product to do my auditing for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As long as we're talking about, you know, high top tier storage systems, not little black boxes that you buy at Starbucks. Right. So the, the other thing I'm thinking is like if I'm an overworked IT professional, I got enough uh, plates that I'm trying to keep spinning, is oh no, this is one more thing. I, it convinced me that it, A, it's not hard to get going, and B, it's worth it. Okay, cool. Both of those are easy. Because of the longstanding relationship here, you know, it, it is almost as simple as plug in the CD and type setup. You're going to have to make some decisions but we have a best practice guide. So if you like what we think is a good thing, you can just sort of check yes yeah. to all of the and boxes. And if I don't know, I can just say, well, it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me, right? right. So yeah, makes sense. <clears throat> and the, the little bit of information that you choose to preserve goes in a classic SQL database, and we supply you with pre-canned reports, okay. and you can write your own if the things that you're interested in are sort of a little bit off of the mainstream. It's definitely easier than implementing backup. Okay. It's harder than implementing your favorite game, but it's easier than backup. As I say, the reasons that it's worthwhile are twofold. One is you don't want to be the next guy. Right. And all of this, you know, plus the FBI director statements, we know that people can get into our network whenever they want. Right. There, there are no ironclad guarantees. Sure. And in the case of these, 
that wasn't even an outside hacker. It was someone using appropriate credentials okay. for the data stores he accessed. So prevention is literally out of the question. But so what you, is more important. Right, what you can is detect and then interrupt. Okay. This okay. system can automatically turn off the user ID that's doing the deed, if that's what you want. Yep. Or signal security, or however, however your institution wants to handle it. Right. But, but there's no chance that your data isn't accessible to somebody who wants it. It's just a problem of economics. Got it. Is your data interesting enough to them in the marketplace to pay the cost of getting it? Right. And then it sounded to me like the example you gave about an executive moving their files and saying you deleted it, that would also be a huge time saving for the IT guys too. It's because <laughs> if I didn't have that evidence, I'd have to literally go back and restore it. If I can just move it from another directory or just point it, tell the guy where he moved it to, that's going to be a lot quicker, right? Yeah, exactly. We have customers whose IT departments buy it solely with that function alone. So tell us a little bit about NTP software, and obviously you guys uh, have a solution in this space, so tell us how that works. So. We use all of the technology that we've developed over the years okay. for the management of primary storage and for tiering and archiving. Okay. We reuse all of that same technology, repurpose it into filtering for events okay. that you know, fit an appropriate set of policies, and then allow you to either get notifications or browse and report on the database however you might want. Okay. So it's 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 a put in the CD and type setup kind of thing. The most complicated question in the piece is choosing your database and how to manage the dialogue between the two. And then it's there, it just runs, and it's stunningly inexpensive, given right. that these are you know, multi-million dollar, if not billion dollar events. Yeah. So quick to install, uh, it serves a, r a real purpose. It's something that uh, IT can really deliver value to the organization and not something that they're going to sp spend the rest of their life trying to keep running, it sounds like. Yeah, no, not at all. It, and and deliver from a company that's got literally um, decades of experience. Yeah, it's, it's really stunningly simple and, and you know, might be the thing that keeps something really ugly out of your environment. Right. Well, Bruce, thanks for joining us today. Ah, thank you. Appreciate it. So there you have it. What, one area to explore is this concept of uh, uh, file auditing and, and making sure you can secure and keep the next, make sure your company doesn't become the next headline. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.